Good afternoon everybody, my name is Etienne Westazen and it has been a while since we've done the last video, um, life. Anyway, the last time we were probably building the pizza oven at around about that point. As you can see, the pizza oven's finished, it's been finished for probably around 8 months now, we've used it a lot and I am in the process of editing this video um, so that the completion of the pizza oven is coming. Um, but before we get into that, I need to explain this which is the rocket stove, um, which is a critical part of our oven design. Um, so I've ded I'm dedicating this whole video to the rocket stove. Um, and in this video, I'm basically going to show the kids the f or show them the principles of fire. Um, not just making a fire, but the principles of what, what makes an effective fire. Um, so you don't waste a lot of energy. Um, and Critical to that is understanding a rocket stove. So we're going to dive into that. Okay, cool. Can you make more? I can do it. Miss Copy, you put the vote. You don't want to get a frog. I'm going to do it for the mark. So. See, I'm going to get it. This one is going to get it. Well, if it's trouble, can't do it. Do you know how to make a fire? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. You're in yours, it's unfinished. Yeah, you're not ready for it. Yeah, we need to. Okay, I'm going to do it. Okay, you're going to do it. Yeah. What is this? It's a meat. Tian? No. This, what, what do we need to make fire? Uh, lighter. Lighter is ignition. You need, you need something to start the fire, right? Yeah. What, what does the fire burn? Grass. Grass is fuel. So you need ignition and you need fuel. What else do you need? Air and wood. Oxygen. Air, yes. Oxygen. oxygen. So those three things, it's important. Ignition, fuel, and air. But to make a fire run, burn efficiently. What is efficiently? Um, um, straight away. I'm to totally... Um, you have to burn it. Properly. Efficiently is to make sure that there's no waste. Okay, you want to so? Yes, you need the camera. It's to burn it proper, proper, probably. Okay, to burn it properly. Okay, there's a fourth thing we need to burn it properly, and that is heat. But the heat comes from the fire. Yeah. But sometimes when you start a fire, and it starts to smoke like that, you've got fuel, you've got ignition, and you've got air, but it's smoking. Do you know why it's smoking? Because there's no heat yet. You need heat to make it, to make the smoke go away. That's why you have to do it outside. Yeah, no, but you need heat. So what we're doing here with the rocket stove, is we're going to give ignition, we're going to start this, we'll give the fuel, the fuel goes in here, the air will go in here as well, but the how I've built it with that special rock, the vermiculite, is so that it contains the heat. It is an insulator, so all the heat is inside here, it doesn't escape. So now I've got fuel, air, ignition, and insulation for the heat. So this thing should burn really, really well. Do you guys understand that? No. Okay, perfect. Let's try and light this thing now. Okay, wach, you want to turn, turn, wach? You're going to light. You're going to light. You're going to light. Oh, I made a spark. So now you're trying to make a spark, eh? Uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. we go. Okay.
Okay, so it roughly explains to the kids what, what's required to make fire. But in terms of the, the dynamics of a rocket stove, which is basically you wood in, air comes through, and the, this bottom section of the chimney is the, the burn chamber. That's where the, the, the actual fire is, and then it sends the heat up. Why I chose vermiculite is to insulate it as best we can. And that's simply it. There's variations of this. You could put a tube here so it's gravity fed. Um, I found that, the, or oh, I'm experimenting. I'm not going to say, I, I thought that this might be the simplest and the best one. Um, I chose to use a metal pipe because we'll be using wood in and out here. So it's quite robust and strong. Um, and then I've got a little mechanism here to take out the ash if need be. Yeah, so it's incredibly simple, but highly effective. There's, there's very little heat that is escaping. All the heat is being chased, pushed into this pot. And that's, that's what you want. There's very little smoke. So it's a very efficient way of burning wood. And you don't need big wood. Ideally, you want pieces that size. Chete. And that should do the job. Yeah. The other thing is of controlling the temperature now obviously you could pull this back or push it in but if you really want a really hot fire use smaller pieces and if you want a cooler fire you use big pieces now that's a bit counterintuitive but think of it in surface area if you've got lots of small pieces there's lots of surface area for for the combustion the the fire to to take place so there's a lot more heat generated the bigger piece there's less surface area so you have a cooler fire so yeah, a bit counterintuitive as most things are these days. Um, but yeah, that's that's how we'd control the temperature. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, the classic rocket stoves. I made rocket stoves out of, geez, that first one was out of brick and cement. Then I tried clay. Um, that one that was in the video now is the third incarnation, which was um, vermiculite, cement and clay. Um, that one, sorry, was vermiculite, sand and cement. Um, you can understand why the vermiculite is really important because it's the insulating powers of it. And the problem I found with both the brick and cement and the clay versions is those, both those, those bricks and clay are, have a lot of um, thermal mass to them. So they hold the heat. The problem with that is to light a fire that Thermal mass needs to get hot first before the fire is actually effective. That's where the vermiculite comes in really well. Um, for the stove, I changed my plans a little bit. I went with the classic um, owl with the 45 degree pipe. So this is where the wood comes in, the air comes in, and the fire comes up. And that all that around there is vermiculite and cement and sand. And that is your insulating powers. This is incredibly effective. Um, yeah this i can turn this oven into sort of a convection oven within 20 or 30 minutes it's really really quick i don't wait have to wait for the oven to get hot in a traditional pizza oven um yeah so the next video is the pizza oven but thank you for being patient <laughs> um please like and subscribe cheers bye